Hello everyone, my name is Yang Sang Cho, the founder of Jadam. In this episode, I'm going to talk about how to assemble irrigation system. There are overall two parts, one for the external hardware assembly, and the other one is about electrical system. To begin the assembly, as a major equipment, first you will need three pallets to flatten the land surface, where you're going to locate the tanks and the motors. Then one big water tank, and two medium-sized tank, and lastly, the two motors, one for the water tank, and the other one is four smaller tanks, and lastly, the water softener. For this video, I purchased two ton size big tank and two 600 liters size tanks. The first 600 liters tank will be used as microbes incubator and liquid fertilizer, and the next one will be used as pest solution. There were a lot of controversy on environmental hormones from the plastic tank. It was partially true, but now almost all water tank products are eligible to use for drinking water as well. Let's first start with assembling the motors, the pump. The first pump is from a company called Hanil, which they are broadly known brand in South Korea. The first electric water pump's electric power consumption is 1,500 watts. The pressure height is 15.5 meters. I'm not an expert on electric water pumps, so you can always get advice from nearest hardware store for more information. The size also can vary depending on your size of the land. And the second pump's power consumption is 580 watts, which is better with smaller tanks. This pump is made for houses. It will automatically turn off when it is not in use. And this is the water filter called disk filter. When you start using it, expect to clean quite a bit often cause it will get dirtier the more you use. First, let's attach this filter into the main pump. And of course, we will we'll be using Teflon tape to prevent leakage. After this one, Let's now assemble the other pipeline that will be connected to the other pipes and water tanks. When it comes to Teflon, we also don't know how much is the accurate time to wrap the thread with Teflon tape. But with my years of experience, wrap about 20 times on plastic parts and 7 to 15 times for seal made parts depending on the size. Do wrap the Teflon properly because you don't want to find a leakage after completing the assembly. Then next, I will install this part. For this one, you will be needing 50A to 40A connecting nipple. Because the plastic valve comes in a size of 40A, but the filter size is much bigger. And I'll repeat the same thing on the other side. Then we're going to attach something on the below the filter. There's another 58 size thread for the pump. I'm going to use the steel connecting nipple. When it comes to PVC pipe, there's a specific tool rather than just normal wrench. This is much convenient for you and you can get it from the hardware stores as well. Next, I'm going to make a hole to install the valve. Before drilling, make sure to drill a little bit higher so that the valve itself has some space to rotate freely. Or you can put extra pellets to install it a little more below. The tool that you need is the hole cutter. The hole cutter should be a little bit bigger than the steel fitting so that it will be firmly installed. Continue drilling slowly then when the cutter reaches to the tank, give a little more force to drill further. Once you complete making hole, there is one problem. The fitting that I'm holding should be installed from the inside. Going into the tank to install that would be time consuming and not a smart way to do. 
And this is where the trick comes in. Let me show you how. First, take the thin pipe, then insert it into the tank and through the hole below. Lastly, just drop the other parts of the fitting, then hold it until it is tightened. Keep on installing it until you feel enough. If the part inside of the tank is rotating along with the bolt, then hold that part and continue until it's done. Then next, I'll make another hole for the incubator tank. I'll be using 28 size valve in order to fit the PB pipe. Once I'm done, I'll repeat the same thing for installing the fitting. The most general pipe that we know is the white clear pipe, but these are weak in heat during summer. So I recommend using PB pipe, which is much more durable. You have probably noticed the difference between the previous black PVC valve and the current one. Let me show you the difference. The structure is based on three components. Once you open the bolt, you will be able to see three different rings. First one is the rubber fitting, the second plastic fitting, then third one is steel teeth for securing the pipe. Before pushing in the pipe, make sure to put the steel part inside of the pipe. Then when I push the PVC pipe in, there will be first smooth click, then other hard click you will feel. That means it is all fixed in place. From now on, I will connect the pipeline from bottom to top. When you purchase large quantity, it comes in a roll. So make sure to stretch it straight before installing it. There is specific cutter for PVC pipe. Purchase one of those and slightly force the lever, then cut it through. Once you are done with cutting, it is now time to fit right in. But before that, there is a three different parts after when you open the bolt. Rubber fitting and two different PVC fittings. The mechanism of assembling together is pretty similar with the other thin PVC pipe. It is just little bit bigger. Fit the PVC parts first, then fit the rubber fitting to plug it right in the connecting point. Once I'm done, let me install the elbow. After that, same procedure is continued. Then next, I'll connect a smaller pump from the tank. Then from here, I'll connect a separator before installing all in place. The single side is for the water goes into the water softener and the other sides are for the future, just in case if you're going to connect some other tanks. For this one, I'll use the 28 size connecting nipple 
and the other side I'll be using the size converter for 15A size component. Then I'm going to cut the PVC pipe into 49 centimeters to connect the pipe on the other side. I'm going to install the bottom feed. So, 이것도 아까 그런 식으로 이렇게 듣겠습니다. And I will use the same trick to insert. You might need these small tools depending on the product. Now it's a time to install the valves. Make sure to calculate the working angle of the component so that you won't have to release again and again to fit the angle. Then next, let me connect the all pipes first with the T-joint. Once it is all connected, I'll make a turn from here. If your sink for the water is on the side, turn the pipe where the sink is located. The other pipe part which is already assembled is for the water softener exit. Lower pipe you can use it for just ordinary water and the upper part is for the pet solution. And let's continue with the bottom part assembly. It is quite simple. Most of the procedures are similar. The bottom pipeline gets direct connection from the main tank. And I'll install the filter in order to avoid the blockage from any unknown material. Then next, I'm going to drill a hole on existing pipe. This particular component is called plumbing settle clamp. It enables me to drill a hole on the pipe and make a different connecting point for other components. There is a rubber packing in the middle. Make sure it is aligned with the point where you want to drill a hole. Then use the screws to hold it together so that it won't wobble when you are drilling. For this, I will use 16mm hole cutter. Once it is completed, I'll move on to the next step, which is connecting the tank with the water softener. I'll convert the ordinary socket with the one touch fitting. Then the same thing with other parts on the top. Next is, we need to install other thin pipes to be connected on the water softener. For that, I will need two PVC elbow because we are gonna turn twice. After that, let me connect the other PVC pipe to connect the water softener.
And now we are almost completed installing all the parts and I will connect the other parts with the disk filter. I will insert the parts on the both sides and please do measure the length before cutting the pipe. Then measure the other side as well. Once it is done, bring the pipeline to be back of the disk filter. Then decide which side you're going to make a turn. It really depends on your farm lane design. Next, I will add another 25mm hose line to ease the pressure of the water pump. And to do that, I'll make four different holes. Um, let me tell you why we need to install these pipes. When you are turning on the irrigation system, the pressure of the each pipe will increase. And if you release the lever, the irrigation pipe on the field cannot be sustained due to its high pressure. And to secure the pipelines, we need to install the sub hose, which will reflux the water back into the pump, meaning the pressure of the water will be normalized and prevent any leakage happening. As you can see, there is one main pipeline coming out from the container and there is one lever to control water level. But also it is connected with the thin pipe which is connected with other water tank for liquid fertilizer. If you release the big lever at all at once, of course, it will just flow into the ground. But if you release a little bit, the pressure will absorb the water from the fertilizer tank. So it is capable of irrigating water and fertilizer in the same time. And this specific part is not so very necessary, but if you have it, then it would be great to connect other water pipes and water tanks along with it. This small water pump is the automatic and whenever there is a tank with lever open, it will water it until it is full but it will be closed if the tank is already full or lever is closed. As you can see, the inside of the water tank is not visible and it's because of most if the tank gets direct contact with sunlight. But with this blue tank, we don't know exactly how much the water level is inside, right? So I'm going to install some parts which will enable us to see the water level. Once you're done, write down the indication of the amount so that you won't have to look into the site to check every time. And here, install one small short pipe inside of the tank. Vent out the hose with fire, then install it. When you release the lever down below, you will be able to see all the water gets drained out of the tank. Use the marker to indicate which hose is coming from which pump and water softener. You can use these two tanks for both pesticide microbial solution and liquid fertilizers. When you would want to use the both tank, release all the lever down below which are connected with the main water pump. And let's talk about the floating valve. The big tank needs big floating valve because of its size and of course small valve for the small size. There are a lot of products for stopping the water such as electric flo floating valve but this one is so far cheapest and reasonable. As you can see our setup includes three major electric equipment the main pump, small sub pump and electric heater for microbial incubation. 
but you can also add some more such as electric powered spray and to run all of that of course we'll be needing some electric distribution board to cover the circuit from the rain for that i'll make another video how to make one speaking of the electric heater you can get this from amazon or the aliexpress this is needed when the temperature drops below 8 celsius degree it's because of the inactive micros below that temperature choose the one which fits the tank perfectly don't choose something longer or very short using microbial solution is the key factor to maintain healthy soil condition so make sure to irrigate often as possible there is no right temperature indication with this piece of machine if it's too cold you have to increase the temperature even higher so please keep that in mind and lastly when you are using this tank for the first time make sure to pour the water in and during winter please release all the water out to prevent freezing there is going to be some problem with the automatic pump when you use it for a longer period of time if it does happens check the part behind the motor to fix it thank you for watching and i will see you guys in the next videos